How's it going guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today we're on a battle versus Artemis in the Smogon Overused tier. Stick around till the end for a bonus battle and with that being said, let's jump straight into the game. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun Artemis. So they're going to lead off with Natrix, which is going to be the superior as we lead off with our trusty Dragapult. Both nice and shiny, gotta love it. But before the battle truly begins, if you want to see more high quality daily Pokemon Wi-Fi battles like this one, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And with that being said, let's go straight. I would go for a Flamethrower, but they could Terra. So I'm going to go straight for a U-turn into my uh, Corviknights. That U-turn does a lot of damage, which is great. Superior is quite bulky, so that's good to see a lot of damage on that. Um, as now we'll go straight into Corviknight, because Corviknight can definitely handle this thing, no problem. Um, there we go. So Corviknight comes through, like so. In comes Noctis, the Corviknight. Um, they go for a Leaf Storm, which is fine. Now, here's the problem that we're going to have. They're either going to Terrify here, Terror Blast, or they're going to go for a switch out into maybe the Darkrai or the Corviknight of their own. So what I'm going to do here is expecting a Terra Fire potentially. Now, I don't think they'll Terra right away. I think we go for a U-turn here straight up. They do withdraw. Okay, so they're not going to Terra straight away. So I made the right read, which is good. That's what we like to see. And in comes Glitch of the Distant Past, which is the Porygon Z. Nice and shiny as well. Gotta love it. We go for that U-turn on the Switch. It's going to do no damage. Uh, which is a bit of chip, to be fair. Porygon Z is a bit more frail than Porygon 2. Um, so what do we go into here? I I'm leaning towards the Scrafty. I'm um, leaning towards that. Um, and that could be a really good one because I don't have a Ghost type. So I think I will go Scrafty. Because Scrafty is specially defensive. It can definitely take a hit from this thing, no problem. So in comes the Scraftinator. Gets the Intimidate off, not that it matters. So I'm going to go for a Drain Punch because I think they're going to either switch out into Swampert or Corviknight. So I just kind of want to get some damage off. So they do withdraw the Porygon Z as expected. What are they going to go into though? The Armorlia. What's that going to be? The Corviknight, nice and shiny as well. And we go, they go have, they have pressure, which is good to know. We go for that Drain Punch. That's going to do no damage. Wait, this is a bit of damage to be fair. Um, are they Rocky Helmet? They are Rocky Helmet. So that's good to know. So the real question is, do I switch out here or do I go for a knockoff? Now, they're obviously going to go for a Brave Bird or a Body Press. So I want to switch out and I want to go into something that can take those, but I don't really have much. I think I'll go into my own Corviknight. I think that's the way to go about it. My own Corviknight is probably the way. Um, so that's what we're going to do because we can take any hit from this thing. No problem. They may go for a U-turn. They do go for a U-turn, but we get the Rocky Helmet chip on them as well, which is always nice. So with that, they can probably switch into whatever they want. I, mean, I think they're going to go Darkrai, to be honest with you. I think Darkrai is a good switch there. In comes Darkrai. That is a very good switch. Now, Darkrai doesn't really get coverage for Corviknight, but it can hit really hard anyway. So I am tempted to go for a Body Press just to get rid of this big threat straight away. Or a U-turn. I think I'll go for the slow U-turn. They do go for a Nasty Plot, which is terrifying. However, us being able to go straight for the U-turn here and get Break Potential Sash and do a lot of damage as well is going to be really clutch for us right now. So let's see how that plays out for us. I think if, if Bruxish is going to do anything this game, it's going to be taking out this Dark Cry with a Wave Crash. Um, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. They probably don't expect the Scarf. They might expect it because I've brought it in. But Wave Crash hits everything on the team except from the High Drapple pretty hard. So I'm going to go for it. Um, they do not expect the wave crash as we're able to cleanly take out that dark ride with a wave crash. There was no way it was living that from a Bruxish. They did not expect the Choice Scarf Bruxish at all. No one ever does expect the Choice Scarf Pokemon. You know, Infernape was Choice Scarfed and that did really well as well. Ingham's Glitch again, the Paragon Z. That thing's probably Choice Scarf if they brought it in like that. Um, so what do I do here? I'm leaning towards the uh, Scrafty because it's special defensive. So I think I will go into Scrafty. Scrafty's actually... Scrafty and Bruxish are putting in the work right now. <laughs> If we get rid of that Corviknight, then um, we're actually pretty golden with Bruxish, you know? So anyway, we get the Intimidate off again with a Scrafty. They probably go for a Hyper Beam. They don't. We go for a Thunderbolt, which isn't going to do too much damage to us. It doesn't paralyze us as well, which is nice. We probably see a switch into the Corviknight here. Um, so I am going to go for that knockoff straight up, just because I want to get that Rocky Helmet off of it. So they withdraw the Glitch. Are they going to go into the Corviknight? That's the real question. More than likely, if I had to guess... On Morlia, that's the uh, Corviknight, definitely. So there it is. Nice and shiny, of course. We get the pressure off. Well, they get the pressure off. And um, we go for a knockoff, which is going to do a bit of damage, but also gets rid of their Rocky Helmet, which is great. Um, now we can probably expect them to go for a, a Roost here. So this does give us a, a good opportunity to switch something in to take care of the Corviknight. 
And I am leaning towards, because looking at the rest of the team, I'm leaning towards Iron Moth or Dragapult. I think Dragapult might be better, so I am going to go Dragapult. I don't want to use that boost energy on Iron Moth just yet. So we'll go Dra Dragapult real quick, and then we can go straight for a Flamethrower or a Shadow Ball, whichever one we want to go for. So there we go, nice and shiny. They do go for a Roost as expected. Now, they probably don't stay in here. Um, they more than likely go for a U-turn, however, so they can get a free switch in. Or they go for the... Um, I think I go for a Flamethrower still. Yeah, they, they stay in. They probably go for a U-turn here. So Flamethrower does a lot of damage, which is great. They go for the Brave Bird, which does half the Dragapult. Not enough damage, though. Not enough damage, though. The, we go for a Flamethrower again all the time here because we don't want them to roost that damage back off. As they do Terra. What type are they going to Terra into, though? Are they going to go Terra Water? Probably Terra Water, right? Let's see if Terra Water can take Flamethrower. Yeah, it's Terra Water. Cool. So... Terra Water is a pretty common um, Terra type for Corviknight because Water is just a really good defensive typing. Um, so we go for a Flamethrower. It's not enough to get the KO, unfortunately, as they can go for a Roost now. So, however, with them being a Water type now, we have got other options to take care of this thing. So what we can do is we can go... Oh, no, we don't actually. Hmm. That's a bit of a pickle. So Iron Moth does really well here. That's for sure. We could go Donphan and go for Stealth Frogs. That could be useful. Not really. One thing is for sure is we do not let the Dragapult go down because looking at the team, Draco Meteor now hits everything really hard. Now that the Corviknight is out of the Steel Typing, they go for a Brave Bird though. And that's going to do no damage to my Corviknight, but we do get the Rocky Helmet Chip, which is nice. And now they get the Recoil as well from the Brave Bird, which is cool. We go for a U-turn because we're going to be slower because I have minus I have minus nature and I've got zero speed IVs on this Corviknight. Or do I? I can't actually remember. That might be Silvera that has the minus speed. Might have been Silvera. I can't actually remember. So they go into Mudstar, which is going to be the Swampert, right? Yep, nice and shiny as well. All pink and stuff, purpley. We go for a U-turn and it does no damage, but it's still chip at the end of the day. And it lets us see if they've got leftovers or not as well, which they probably do. Um, so now what do we do? I'm leaning towards the Iron Moth for the Energy Ball here. Um, that is one good thing that we could do. Um, we could also go into uh, Donphan and get the Stealth Frogs up. I'm leaning towards the Scrafty though. I want to start setting up Bulk Ups with Scrafty. That's what I think I want to do. So I'm going to go into Kerrang. My Scrafty. Get that Intimidate off, which is going to be good. They may want to go for a Stealth Rock here. So I think I'm pretty safe going for a Bulk Up. To be honest with you, I think it might be time for Scrafty. It might be time for Scrafty, to be honest with you. As they do reveal, they are leftovers, which is good to know. So, leftover Swampert is fine. Um, let's go for a bulk up. Let's start bulking up real quick. So, we go for the bulk up. We're going to boost our defense and attack. They've got a lowered attack, so that means their Earthquake is not doing anything, but they may go for a Stealth Rocks. Uh, they go for a Flip Turn, which is fine. That's going to do no damage to us, pretty much. And uh, now, what do they do? Are they going to go Corviknight or are they going to go Superior maybe? Natrix comes in. Is that the Superior? It is. So the Superior is here. What do we do here? Because they're going to go for the Leaf Storm spam. 100%. They always go for the Leaf Storm spam, spam here. The Dragapult's U-turn did that much. So I think Ice Punch has a good chance to KO here. So I think I'm going to go for it. I don't want to Terra, that's for sure. So they go for that Leaf Storm, which isn't going to do too much damage to us, but it does get that special attack boost, which is fine. And then we go for an Ice Punch, which is definitely going to do a lot, but not enough to KO, unfortunately. So that's unfortunate. Maybe I should have gone for a Drain Punch. No, because Leaf Storm would have still KO KO'd anyway. Um, I could have gone for a Knock Off. Knock Off might have done a bit more damage. I don't think it would have, though. I really don't think it would have. So um, let's switch out. We're going to Corviknight. Corviknight can definitely take any hit from this thing. So we may have got our bulk up, but I want to keep my Scrafty around because it could still be useful for that Porygon Z. So we're going to Noctis real quick. Like so. They go for the Leaf Storm again, getting to plus four attack, uh, special attack, still doing no damage. They can't Terra, so we don't have to worry about Terra Fire. Um, and Dragon Pulse is probably their over coverage move, so don't have to worry about that really. So what we can do here is we can U-turn or we can Brave Bird. I am debating which one to do, and I'm leaning towards the U-turn. Or a Roost. I think I'll go for the U-turn option, because I don't think they want the Superior to go down. They actually go for a Leaf Storm, which is going to definitely do a lot more damage. Um, but it's still nothing to Corviknight, as we take it out with the U-turn, which is amazing. So, with Corviknight uh, Superior out of the way, their team is now officially slowish, because they had Darkrai and Superior, which are now down. So we can safely go into Bruxish now. 
and we can go for a flip turn on whatever they bring in, which is probably going to be the Hydrapple. They might not risk the Hydrapple because I could have Ice Fang for all they know. And I actually do wish I had Ice Fang, but I don't. So in comes the glitch. Now, if Brooks is just doing anything in this game, it's KOing this uh, Porygon Z. So I'm going to stay in and go for a Psychic Fangs here. They aren't Scarf, which is good to know, as they cleanly go down to that Psychic Fangs. I did not expect that to KO. In comes Gaia, which is going to be the Hydrapple. So this thing is bulky. It can definitely take a um, Psychic Fangs, that's for sure. So what do I do here? Do I go in? What do I sack off? Do I sack anything off? I don't think I do. I think Corviknight is the one to sack off here. If we're going to sack anything off, it's going to be Corviknight. Because they probably go for a Fickle Beam. Um, which will definitely KO Brooks-ish. But I don't think it'll KO... Well, I might, I might, I'll probably KO Corviknight. Energy Ball. Even better. That means we don't get KO'd. So there we go. So we could go for a Roost here. We do get a Special Defense drop on them thanks to Mirror Armor. But I'm leaning more to... I, I think I'll go for a Roost. I think that's the way to go. Because this Corviknight is unbreakable at this point. So we go for the Roost, which is great and all. What are they going to go for? Are they got Hydro Pump as coverage. Energy Ball again. Are they Choice Specs? Probably, right? There we go. That does a little bit of damage. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to Brave Bird this thing in the face. I want Corviknight to go down so I can do free switch him with something else. But I want to get damage off on this Hydra Apple. As that does a clean 50%, which is great. And then they can just go for whatever they want. They go for a Figure Wing, so they're not Choiced. And they're going all out for it as well. Noctis had no chance of taking that. Noctis had no chance of taking that, but luckily the Hydrapple is weakened. We know the Brave Bird did a lot of damage, so we could definitely go into something like Scrafty here and go for an Ice Punch, uh, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring Scrafty in. Scrafty's a pretty good one. There we go. Scrafty comes in. We get the Intimidate off. Not that it matters. We definitely outspeed, so we can go for an Ice Punch straight up. So Ice Punch comes through. KOs the Hydrapple. Scrafty getting two KOs, which is cool. Did he get two KOs? No, it's not two KOs. No, he's got a KO, though. Brooksish got two KOs, though, which is cool. But then Strong Jaw Psychic Fangs are so strong. So strong. Mudstar comes in. So all we need to do with the uh, Swampert is we need to get some damage off on it so Brooksish can finish it off with a Psychic Fangs. So I'm going to go for a knockoff here because we do outspeed. And I want to get rid of its leftovers. So there we go. We've got rid of the leftovers, which is great. Uh, no more residual recovery for you. As they go for an EQ, which is probably going to take us out. As we live on 5 HP... Scrafty's really bulky. You know, it's, it's such a bulky Pokemon. That's for sure. So let's go for a Drain Punch now, because it'll do a bit more damage than Knockoff, and it'll recover our health a little bit as well. You go for that Drain Punch, and every little bit of damage we can get on the Swampert is good damage at this point. So we have weakened it enough to the point where I think we can take it out. So they go for an Earthquake, which is going to take out Scrafty. I think we can take this thing out with Bruxish's Psychic Fangs now. I think we can. Or we can go for Wave Crash. Now, I'm not going to give a Wave Crash because the Corviknight's a water type. What I want to do here with Bruxish is I want to go for the Psychic Fangs and KO the Swampert. And then we'll go for the Psychic Fangs again on the Corviknight. Even though it won't KO, um, we can bring Dragapult in then afterwards. So Psychic Fangs comes through, cleanly takes out that Swampert, which is amazing. So Swampert goes down. I actually, like, part of me was thinking that wasn't going to KO. But Bruxish's, like, biting moves are so strong. Especially since he gets stabbed Psychic Fangs. But in comes Corviknight. Bruxish is finishing up the game. I forgot it had low HP. Amazing. Let's go for a Psychic Fangs now and take out this uh, Corviknight. That is going to be the game. So GG Artemis. That was a fun one. We got a Bruxish video. Yay. Bruxish did so well. That choice guard really caught them off guard against the Darkrai, for example. But Bruxish did so well. GG. And we have ourselves a bonus battle. Today we're having a bonus battle versus Cassie, also known as Osha Watts, from the Discord server in the OU tier. Let me know who you think is going to win based on the teams you see on screen right now. And with that being said, let's jump straight into the game. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Osha Watts. So they're going to lead off with Masquerade, which is not what I expected. I was expecting Glimora as we lead off with Donphan. The idea was that Earthquake the Glimora, I shot the Glimora breaking after the Sash has been used up, and then we go from there. But. Um, anyway, before the battle begins, if you want to see more high-quality daily Pokemon Y files like this one, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And with that being said, let's go for a Stealth Rocks, because they probably go for a... Uh, oh, they go for a Stun Spot. I was going to say Sticky Webs. Um, but they actually go ahead and paralyze Madon fan, which is really unfortunate. So, with us being paralyzed, we're in a bit of a pickle, because now we can't move. I could have Ice Shard them next turn to break the Focus Sash, but now I can't, because we got fully paralyzed. So, let's go for a Stealth Rock real quick. They go for an Ice Beam, which is going to sting... 
Doesn't quite do enough damage to take us down to our sturdy, but we get the stealth rock up, which is amazing. So there we go. Stealth rock is here. So now what do we do? If they're going to go for another ice beam to take us out, we should switch out. But what do I go into? I'm leaning towards the Brooks-ish so we can flip turn and break the sash. And then go into... Dom... No, then go into... What can I go into, really? I think I think maybe Corviknight's the answer. So I'm going to go Corviknight. Because Corviknight doesn't care if he gets paralyzed. If anything, it's better because we get slow U-turns then. So we'll go into Corviknight to take this Ice Beam. It's going to bounce right off Corviknight, no problem. Noctis is here. They go for a Sticky Web this time, though. We could defog for all they know, but we have just set up Stealth Rocks because they probably realize we don't have that. Um, but looking at their team, nothing really wants to take a Brave Bird. So I'm going to go for the Brave Bird. Well, Glamora can take a Brave Bird, but what can Glamora do to Corviknight in return? Nothing. So they go for a Stun Spot and miss, which is unfortunate, but we got fully paralyzed on one turn. So well, you know what? It's only fair. Brave Bird comes through, cleanly takes out the Masquerade. No Focus Sash, nothing like that. They probably have Sash on the Glimora instead. So the Masquerade goes down without having to do anything to Corviknight. And that's just great. Iron Moth comes in. This thing is a threat to my Corviknight, that's for sure. We could Terror Dragon and be resistant to Fiery Dance and even Energy Ball if they were predicting the Water Terror. Um, but I'm not going to do that with Corviknight. Instead, what I'm going to do is I, I want to go into our Donphan and try and get a um, Rapid Spin off. But I'll have to do that against the Low Kicks, I think. Um, so that's unfortunate. So what do we do? I'm leaning towards, because they didn't have booster energy, so I'm leaning towards Scrafty to go for a knockoff. Um, but they could go for a Dazzling Gleam. I'm leaning towards Dragapult. I think I go Dragapult here, because it resists the Fiery Dance, which they're probably going to go for, right? Because it's a bit early in the game for them to be making really amazing le uh, reads. So we'll go into Dragapult like so. And if they make the read here, that's fine. If they make the read, it's fine. We are caught in the sticky web because unfortunately we're not clear body. They go for an energy ball, which is going to do diddly squat to us. There we go. And now we can fire off a, Dra a Draco Meteor. But instead, what I'm going to do is I'm expecting the pre-marina to come in. So I kind of want to go for a U-turn. So, or do I go drop a Draco? What's my switch in if pre-marina comes in? Not a lot. We really need to get rid of that sticky web somehow. We need to get rid of that sticky webs. Because that Dragon Ball outspeeds everything. I think the best thing for us to do is go U-turn here. Um, they go for a Dazzling Gleam, which is unfortunately going to KO us. Um, so that's very unfortunate. We do need to get rid of these Stealth Rocks somehow. Um, what do we do? Can't go into you because if we Terra Water, they're still going to Energy Ball us. We could go into our own Iron Moth and get the Booster and any special attack. Or we could go Brooks-ish. Or, or we could go into Scrafty. Well, Scrafty gets Dazzling Gleams as well. That's the problem. We could Terra Fairy. I think I'm going to go Scrafty and Terra Fairy. So we'll go Scrafty and Terra Fairy. I know I've just seen a Dazzling Gleam, and they're probably thinking the same thing. You've just seen Dazzling Gleam. What are you doing? Um, and I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm going to KO you. So let me just check the stats real quick. So I'm going to Terra Fairy, and first things first, I'm going to take that item off of it. I'm going to knock whatever item it's got off. Um, I don't think it used booster energy. I don't remember seeing booster energy. But why does the hat look so big on Scrafty? Like, the hat is massive. It's bigger than Scrafty. That's wild. So, they go for a fiery dance, which shouldn't do too much damage. Yeah, not too much damage at all. And um, they don't get the special attack boost as well, which is great. We go for a knockoff, which is a clean 2 at KO. Well, it would be if they still had an item, but unfortunately, they don't. So, we're going to get a leftover recovery. And I guess we could go for a bulk up. But it's a bit risky. They could go for a Sludge Wave now. That's the problem. They could go for a Sludge Wave, which won't KO us. I'm going to go for another knockoff, because they, they go for a Sludge Wave, which won't KO us. I'm confident. Yep, there we go. We lived on 5 HP once again, like the last battle. Knockoff doesn't get the KO, obviously, because it's weakened in power. Um, but now the, the Iron Moth is in range for something else to KO it. Um, I don't know what, though, because I don't have Aqua Jet on my uh, Brooks-ish. My own Iron Moth can KO it now. So I guess Scrafty did do good here. The Intimidate is not going to be super useful for anything else. So I guess I'll just go for a knockoff just in case. They go for a Fiery Dance though to get that special attack boost, which is fine. That's going to take us out. Let's see if they get the special attack boost. They don't, which is good. So Karan goes down. But it did good because it weakened the um, Iron Moth to the point where we can take it out with our own Iron Moth now. Um, which is exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to bring the Iron Moth in. Mothra.bot. There we go. Sticky webs are going to take effect, but it's fine. We can handle this, no problem. 
We are going to get that booster energy and special attack. Which is all fine as well. Special attack was heightened. And now we go for a fiery dance. We definitely go for a fiery dance 100% here. Go for their own sludge wave. They just want to get damage off before their iron moth goes down. Which makes sense. As uh, we go for a fiery dance. Which could get us a special attack boost. But... Whether it does or not is another question. It doesn't. So Iron Moth does go down, which is great. The opposing Iron Moth. And uh, our Iron Moth's sitting pretty right now. That Iron Moth being out of the way is a really big threat gone. So that's great. Glimora comes in. And this thing is nice and shiny for a start. I like shiny Glimora. It's cool. We broke the Focus Sash with the Stealth Rocks at least. So now we could go for an Energy Ball. Uh, or we can just switch out into Corviknight. I'm leaning towards the Corviknight play. I'm leaning towards the Corviknight play. I am going to go with Corviknight play. I think Corviknight's fine here. I think Corviknight is fine here. So we'll go Corviknight, like so. Noctis comes through. They go for that Meteor Beam, which is probably Power Herb, right? That's really cool. Meteor Beam with Power Herb is awesome. No, they're not even Power Herb. Cool. So let's go for a Body Press. Why not? They go for that Meteor Beam. That's going to do... All of our health. Unfortunately. So now I'm wondering whether or not we can even rapid spin. I want a rapid spin though. But they're probably going to have energy ball. And they definitely take us out of an earth power. Hmm. I think we need Don Van in on the low kicks. I think that's what we need. So I'm going to go Bruxish. And Bruxish after Choice Scarf should outspeed the Glamora. Even though the sticky webs are up. So we get caught in the sticky webs, which is fine. Let's go for... I want to go wave... I want to go psychic fangs. I really want to go psychic fangs. Let's go psychic fangs. We should outspeed. They actually go for a sludge wave. They do outspeed us still, even after sticky web, which is unfortunate. As uh, Glimora is going to sweep our entire team. So that's one heck of a bonus battle right there. As, um... <laughs> unfortunately, I mean, there is the chance they might not have energy ball. But I think it probably does. And it also probably has Earth Power. I think we have to go Donphan and try it. We have to go Donphan and try it. If we can get the Rapid Spin off, we may have a better chance. I should have gone into this before I went into the Bruxish, to be honest with you. But I'm going to go for the Rapid Spin now. They probably have Energy Ball, though. So they go for a Sludge Wave. They don't have Energy Ball, which is good to know. But that still takes us out, because it's a Donphan. It's not very specially defensive. So Glamora with the Reverse Sweep at the end... You know, after a successful long victory in the last battle, it's always refreshing to be put back in your place and lose a game. So, Iron Moth does come in. They are going to probably have Earth Power for those Steel types. So, I'm going to go for an Energy Ball anyway, just in case. But they go for a Meteor Beam. They know they're going to live this Energy Ball. That's why. They know they're living the Energy Ball. So, we go for the Energy Ball. Solid bit of damage, but not enough as where the Meteor Beam could miss, to be fair. But it looks like it hasn't, as down goes the Iron Moth. And that is going to be the game. So that was the bonus battle. It was a fun little uh, sweep from Glamora, which you never really get to see. So GG Oshawa. That was a really fun one. I enjoyed that. Thank you for the game. But anyway, here is the team. Try it out if you want to. Use the code at the top right corner of the screen. Let me know how it goes if you do use it. And with that being said, I'll see you all in a bit.